Hello, my name's Dale Henwood. No, I haven't played for a while, but I have had a very keen interest in the position. And since the 1983-84 hockey season, I've been the goaltending coach for Canada's national and Olympic hockey teams. In this video, we're going to look at puck handling for goaltenders. Puck handling may mean covering the loose puck, making a short pass to a teammate, or accelerating to a loose puck and making a clearing pass. The ability to handle the puck is a necessity and is one aspect of goaltending that has changed significantly in recent years. Throughout this video, we have made the assumption that the goaltender possesses good shot blocking skills and is a competent skater. Both these are critical to the goaltender's success. Let me get changed now and we'll look at the goaltender's space. There's a need for the goaltender to take charge in this area and control this space, since many plays originate behind the goal line or from the side of the net. The goaltender must remain in the crease area, but he also must be active in terms of deflecting or intercepting pass outs, perhaps poke checking, and generally not allowing the puck carrier to penetrate this area. If the goaltender decides to play the puck, he must be prepared to handle the puck in three zones, as is illustrated. Pucks enter these zones by a variety of methods. Rimmed pucks are common in zone one. If the goaltender chooses to play the puck in zone two, it is usually a dump in. Pucks played in zone three are commonly rebounds or loose pucks following a save. Puck control skills encompass covering the puck with a glove, setting a puck for a teammate, or passing to a teammate. When the goaltender handles the puck, it is fundamentally the same technique as that used by a defenseman or a forward. It's important to get a good grip on the stick, although the grip is difficult, especially for less shooting goaltenders, because of the trapper. Also, the size and weight of the stick make it a little bit more difficult. However, practice and persistence are required, and the goaltender must continue to do these with his gloves on. Essentially, the goaltender has three options available to him when he plays the puck and it's very important that he communicate his intentions to his teammates, either verbally or non-verbally by means of a signal. The three options are freeze it, set it, or play it. Loose pucks must be covered in situations where a team is pressured or the goaltender determines a stoppage is desired. The goaltender keeps his body behind the puck and then covers the puck with his glove. Once the goaltender puts his glove on the puck, he should then protect or shield his hand with his stick. Finally, he should get his head up in order to see the play. Loose pucks can also be frozen with the goal pads, the body, or by jamming the puck against the side of the net with the stick. The defenseman and goaltender should work together to decide where the puck is placed. The position of the puck must allow the defenseman to turn in front of the net or go behind the net, and the defenseman should find the puck in a similar position each time. The goaltender places the puck, then gets his stick out of the way so that he does not screen the puck from the defenseman's sight. Also, it is important the puck be placed in a stationary position when the defenseman picks it up. Initially, the puck is left behind the net and away from the backboards. As the defenseman and goaltender work together, the puck may be left more to the side of the net to allow for more options on behalf of the defenseman. Proper placement of the puck is often critical to a team's breakout success. As well, a good setup is better than a poor pass. <music> 
One of the most neglected areas of goaltending is the use of the stick. The goaltender can play the puck that enters zones one, two, or three. In play at situations, the goaltender can pass the puck to a teammate, rim the puck around the boards, or clear the zone. For puck stop by the goaltender, they must first of all be controlled, and then the goaltender must move to a spot in order to play the puck. On pucks moving slowly, the one-hand sweep or shovel pass is very effective to either side. However, strength is a factor, especially on the forehand side. Once strength has improved, longer passes may be made as an example to a defenseman in the corner or to a forward up the middle of the ice. The technique requires the goaltender to get a good grip on the stick with his blocker hand. The stick is held firmly in the normal position, that is at the shaft, and this also provides the least deviation from the ready or set position. Some situations dictate that a two-hand pass may be required as speed or height is needed to clear an obstacle. The two-hand pass may be executed on either the forehand or the backhand side. If the goaltender must venture from the net, the decision to do so must be quick. Once he has made his play, it is important to return to the net as quickly as possible. Therefore, good skating skills are essential to an effective play in the zone. Goaltenders should be encouraged to handle the puck during drills and at times when they're not actively involved in team drills. Constantly practicing puck handling and shooting will lead to improved confidence and competence. Here are a couple general puck handling drills. In the first drill, the goaltenders are paired up and simply pass the puck back and forth. Initially on the forehand with one hand and then secondly on the backhand with one hand. Later, two hands can be used both on the forehand and on the backhand. As skill and strength improve, the goaltenders can widen out. In the second drill, the goaltender just reacts to a puck that is laying in the crease area and he will pass it on his forehand to either the left side or the right side, as well as on his backhand, either to the left side or to the right side. Here are a few more specific drills to look at situations just discussed. In this first drill, the man with the puck shoots at the goaltender. The goaltender controls the puck and either sets it for a teammate, or secondly, he could pass it back to the shooter who is now skating anywhere inside the blue line area. In the second drill, D1 shoots at the goaltender. The goaltender can either set the puck for D2 or D3 to pick up, or he could pass the puck to D2 or D3. Those players break out over the blue line and then return in a two-on-one versus D1. The goaltender must be aware of what is likely to happen in various situations or in which situations is the puck likely to enter zone one, two, or three. A goaltender's reaction will be based on the number of players, both teammates and opponents, in close proximity to the net, the pressure on the goaltender, the availability of a passing option, as well as the communication which exists between the goaltender and his teammates. The goaltender reads the situation, then his reaction may be to cover the puck, to set it for a teammate, or to play the puck. A rimmed puck usually requires the goaltender to move behind the net into zone one. When the goaltender determines the puck has been rimmed or shot in, he immediately moves to the area behind the net as is shown in the diagram. The goaltender must follow the path of the puck as he leaves to go behind the net so as to be aware of any unexpected bounces. Initially, he must avoid the net and then he should go straight back to play the puck at the backboards. At the moment of the shot, the goaltender makes a strong leg push to move behind the net. As he's leaving the net, he should scan the play to be aware of what's happening. The goaltender must take charge when the puck is in his zone and he should communicate or provide direction to his teammates. Once the puck has been rimmed, the technique used by the goaltender to stop the puck may require use of the stick, the pad, the foot, or a combination of the above. 
The height and speed of the puck are also variables which influence or affect how the goaltender plays the puck. On most rim puck situations, the goaltender can stop the puck with one hand, either on the forehand or the backhand. The stick must be flat on the ice and jammed against the backboards in order to trap the puck. It is very important for the goaltender to go to the area behind the net so that the puck does not squirt out in front of the net should it be misplayed. If two hands are required, the normal shooting position is assumed by the goaltender. In situations where the puck is coming at great speed or if it stays higher on the dasher, the stick and the skate may be used together. If the puck does remain high, the outside edge of the pad must be flushed to the backboards. Once the puck has been stopped, the goaltender must position it properly for his teammates to pick up. Normally, and preferably, the goaltender should return to the net the same way so that he can see the play. This allows him to analyze the play and also facilitates communication with his teammates. Depending on the speed of the puck, the goaltender may be forced to make a full loop around the net. It still is important though for him to stop and place the puck properly. The full loop situation generally occurs when the goaltender is unable to stop the puck until it has passed the midpoint of the net or he's unable to return to the net due to oncoming traffic. On his return to the net, he could temporarily screen the forechecker so as to provide a little extra time for his defenseman to get good control of the puck. Let's now take a look at a few drills to play pucks in zone one. In this drill, the coach simply rims the puck for the goaltender. It is important for the goaltender to scan the play as it returns to the back of the net, or secondly, to make sure that once he stopped the puck, it's positioned properly for a teammate to pick up. Later on, the defenseman and the goaltender could be used together. In this drill, three players work together. They start outside the blue line, and the first man rims the puck for the goaltender to play. Once that man has shot the puck in, he immediately goes to the front of the net. The goaltender stops the rim puck and then quickly returns to the net. Player two now shoots while the first player is in front of the net for a tip in or a screen. Then player three shoots while player one and two remain in front of the net for a tip in or a screen situation. In this drill, 0-1 rims the puck for the goaltender to play. The goaltender stops the puck and places it away from the boards. 0-1 then accelerates to that puck, passes to 0-2, who in turn passes to 0-3. 0-3 then drags the puck to the middle of the ice and shoots on net. In this drill, F1 rims the puck for the goaltender to play. F1 then goes to the front of the net where he becomes a screen or a tip-in man. Once the goaltender has stopped the puck, he quickly returns to the net and D2, who has a second puck and has been handling it at the blue line area, takes a shot on the net while F1 is in front to screen or tip or play the rebound. Pucks that are dumped in, either to the near corner or the diagonal corner, require the goaltender to accelerate to the loose puck, and then he makes his decision, after reading the situation, as to whether to set it or play it. He then accelerates backwards to the net. Here are a couple additional drills to play dumped in pucks. In the first drill, the coach spots the puck for the goaltender. The coach can spot it in the near corner or in the diagonal corner, or the coach could just spot it so that it lands up in the face-off circle. The goaltender then plays the puck and returns to the net. In this next drill, the coach again spots the puck for the goaltender to play. This time, the goaltender sets the puck up for D1. D1 quickly makes a pass to D2 who in turn takes a shot on the goaltender.
pucks played in zone three are commonly rebounds or loose pucks. In some situations, loose pucks occur after the goaltender has stopped the initial shot and controlled his rebound. He has the option to freeze it, to set it, or to play it. The option he chooses will be based upon who is available for the loose puck, who is available for the pass, or does the goaltender have time or space to make a play. Often there is traffic in and around the net, but the goaltender himself is not directly pressured. The goaltender's ability to read the situation dictates his reaction to that situation. In this next drill, the coach spots a puck for the goaltender. The coach then may provide some checking pressure. The defensemen retreat, then they peel off in order to receive the puck from the goaltender. Later on, the defenseman may break out, regroup in the neutral zone, and then attack the goaltender. In this drill, the coach spots the puck to the goaltender who sets it at the side of the net. D1, who starts the drill on his knees, would then accelerate to the loose puck and make a quick pass to D2. D2 passes to D3, who moves along the blue line and takes a shot on net. Another drill would involve the coach spotting the puck for the goaltender, who then passes to one of the X's. The X's would regroup in the neutralized area and attack the goaltender. The player that shoots the first puck would then accelerate to a loose puck positioned at the side of the net and pass back to one of the two remaining X's. Once that player shoots, he picks up a loose puck at the side of the net and passes the puck to the third X who's still in front of the net. Another drill involves the coach spotting the puck to the face-off circle area. The goaltender accelerates to the loose puck and clears the zone with the puck by putting the puck off the glass, passing back to the coach, or simply setting the puck at the side of the net. Once the goaltender has made his play, he accelerates back to the net. Another situation could involve player number one dumping the puck in for the goaltender to handle. The goaltender then sets the puck at the side of the net. Number one accelerates to the loose puck, makes a pass to player number two, who in turn passes to number three, and then number three passes to player number four, who is accelerating into the high slot area for a shot on net. Here are a few additional drills to develop puck handling skills in team play situations. In this first example, it is off the horseshoe formation. The first player passes the puck back to the goaltender, and the goaltender then returns the puck to that player, who may go down the ice in a one versus goaltender situation. This drill may progress to involve two, three, four, or five attackers, as well as two, three, four, or five defenders. In all situations, the players must come back toward the net in order to be available for the goaltender to pass to them. Another example involves the coach spotting the puck to the goaltender. The goaltender then plays the puck to one of the players who is coming back into the zone for a breakout situation. Once the team is broken out, they may return and attack three on two. Another option may be for them to continue down the ice in a five versus goaltender situation. Or thirdly, they may regroup in the neutral zone and attack five versus two.
there are a variety of situations which confront the goaltender and require him to handle a puck. Some of these situations include a quick clear on a line change, a long breakout pass, or passing the puck back to the goaltender. This often occurs when the team wants to waste time during a penalty situation or to set up a controlled breakout. At all times, the goaltender must be alert, and as he reads the situation, if his decision is to play the puck, he must quickly decide what the appropriate play will be. The goaltender then gets the puck, he sets it or plays it, and then quickly returns to the net. The goaltender must also be expressive on the ice and continually communicate both verbally and non-verbally with his teammates. Non-verbal communication may be by means of hand signals or simply positioning the puck where he wants his defenseman to pick it up. Consistency is also important, as once the goaltender leaves the net, he must do so in most situations as his teammates come to expect it. From what you've learned so far in this video, let's now test your read and react ability. We're going to show you a series of clips, and just before the goaltender makes his play, you make the decision. Should he set it, pass or clear it, or freeze it? In this example, there is a loose puck in the zone. There are two Swiss players and four Canadian players. Will the Canadian goaltender Sean Burke choose to set it, pass or clear it, or freeze the puck? The correct choice was B, to pass the puck. Now as the Russian player number 15 takes a shot, does Sean Berg choose to set it, pass or clear it, or does he freeze the puck? In this instance, he chose to freeze it. The Americans dump the puck into the Czechoslovakian zone. There are three American players for checking. Three Czech players are supporting the goaltender. Does the goaltender decide to set it, pass or clear it, or freeze the puck? Keep in mind that in international hockey, a goaltender can freeze the puck below the icing line. The correct answer is B, as the goaltender passes to the wide side. Once again, the Swiss team puts pressure on Sean Burke. Does he set the puck, pass or clear it, or freeze it? Sean chooses to set the puck for number 21, Randy Gregg. How did you fare? Were your decisions consistent with the actions the goaltender chose? Remember, during pre-game warm-ups, it's very important to check the boards to make sure you're aware of any dead spots, live spots, or missing pieces of plastic so that you're not surprised by any unique or unexpected bounces. Goaltenders today must understand the important contribution they can make to team play. A team plays better if the goaltender is able to handle a puck and pass to his teammates. Goaltenders should be encouraged to control the puck in the areas or the zones as we've just discussed then their role will become one of preventing the other team from scoring versus simply stopping the puck, which is a defensive role only. Goaltenders who are active and confident in handling the puck are a big asset to their team. You know, I wouldn't mind trying it one more time.